Uh, longer term, uh, yes, but clearly the risk reward short term has changed. Um, I still think it's probably the first leg of the Australian dollar decline uh, when you know, commodity prices collapse, um, people recognise China slowing down. Um, but having said that, it has come down a long way in a very short period of time. So short term, it wouldn't surprise me if it had a bit of a bounce. Um, but the reality is longer term, typically these uh, cycles last year, three to five years minimum. So it's only been, what, 18 months since the, you know, the, the real peak. So I suspect um, we've probably got another two or three years of declines, but not as sharp and rapid as what we've seen. So you'll still end up getting, you know, I think, two or three or four percent per annum uh, help from the currency, you know, from your offshore investments. And then if you go back to the actual underlying businesses that you know, we're buying offshore, we still think they're getting a better risk reward than what we can find here in Australia. Um, even though you know, Australia has actually come back a little bit the last you know, uh, three months. Uh, what we're finding is the valuations are still a bit more expensive, um, but there's a much better earnings outlook overseas. Um, so all in all, you add it all up together and we still think you're better off being offshore than onshore. Unhedged yet, fully unhedged. Uh, as I say, it wouldn't surprise me short term if it you know, had a bit of a bounce because it's it's pretty big decline uh, the last, even just the last month. Let's take another leg down. Um, but longer term, you know, the reality is we'll probably stay fully unhedged until we see some sort of capitulation. And, and I think I would have mentioned previously that the reality is we don't know how far it will decline uh, until we get a better perspective on the downturn in China. If it's a shallow downturn, you know, maybe mid 60s ends up being the, the low, but if it gets a little bit uh, worse than people expect, and I think there's a good probability of that, and you know, we could see 50 cents or lower. Why do, you, why do you have that view in China? What's the sort of underpinning? Uh, look, I've always had a, a really simplistic view that the bigger the boom, you the bigger the bust, and China was one of the biggest economic booms we've ever seen. So my instincts tell me we're going to have at some point uh, a big adjustment to, to deal with all the problems that kind of uh, came from that boom. And you've seen it recently, you know, all the anecdotes about corruption, uh, things of that nature. So um, I still suspect that, you know, I mean, the market's given them credit for the believing that they can um, manage it. They can't, they're not smarter than anyone else. Um, and the reality is if you look at the China A share market, they try to manipulate that and they did a really good job of it. Uh, we were actually there about a month or two ago, right at the, the peak. And you know, valuations are ludicrous. What was going on there was a ludicrous. And to be honest, it's been surprising how quickly it's unwound. But I think that just shows that the underlying problems in China are worse than people realise. And the government's going to find out they can't manage it. And at some point, they're going to take the pain. And that's probably the point where it finally bottoms. And if you look at any industry or any economy over time that goes through you know, your typical boom bust cycle, typically markets um, don't bottom until they finally fess up and say, okay, we're going to deal with it. So I think it's still ahead of us.